Hi there everyone and welcome back to Japan where today I thought it would be fun for a little bit of a change to talk about my favourite and least favourite band made videos. Now of course music videos are quite subjective as a subject so I'm going to give you my thoughts on the best and worst ones in no particular order and then I want you to get into the comments and of course give me your opinions which could be wildly different in fact I suspect they might be. Now obviously on this channel we usually just talk about music, as some of you who've been following the channel for a while might know, I've directed a few sort of relatively low level music videos before and I'm currently in the process of directing a music video here in Japan and it, made, it really made me think about a lot of the music videos that I like. Bandmade are a band who have, as a general, a fairly good overall quality of music videos and they've got a lot of music videos that fit somewhere in that level of just being functional and good where it's lots of fast cuts and things happening and basically just performance and you go, yeah that's cool, I like that. But some stand out as being a bit better and worse. So let's start off by getting into one of my favourites. And it's probably the most normal band-made standard video on this list, and that's Domination. Now, Domination is one that I quite like because it takes that normal performance in a room theory that band made usually go for and adds a slightly different take. See, usually a lot of their videos have a lot of lens flare and a lot of light effects, which is very cool, but this focuses more on giving you a clear shot of them so you can really see them perform. You can kind of enjoy their facial expressions more. You get some of the funny bits, like, of course, having Konami standing on top of the table that's really cool and some of it is set up but I just like the fact that they've kept the energy without relying so much on lighting effects. Another nice little thing that comes in and gives the video a little bit of extra character is those cutaways to the animated bits where you kind of see the Soviet style red white and black communist type posters appearing showing uh, pictures of uh, you know sort of the evil plan to take over the world that they have and it adds a sort of cartoonish craziness to it as well which which in itself gives the video, as I say, a bit of personality, a bit of its own identity. It's basically a really simple, functional, well-made video, but it's well cut, it's nicely lit, you can see the band that you enjoy so much, it keeps the pace up, and it's got just enough identity to make it stand out from being a bland, performance-only video where you just say, hey, I'd much rather watch them live. So on to one of my least favourite videos, and let's get it out of the way, because we all know it's going to be on here. Start over. Now, unlike most people, I actually, well, unlike a lot of people, I should say, I really like the song Start Over. I like the inclusion of piano. I thought it was a nice little shift in a different direction. And along with the other songs they were releasing at the time, which were much heavier, Start Over was a, just a nice different page in their book. It gave them something different to put in their portfolio. However, where the song played with some really nice aspects of what pop music is and brought it into the band-made formula, the video just straight up jumped for some of the ugliest stereotypes of what pop is. And we all know where I'm going with this. That rather cringy couple having an argument thing going on as a narrative in the video, which at the end all reverses. And, oh, it's just cringy. Um, no offence to the actors. I hope they went on to have good careers and get better or get better directors but it just it isn't convincing it's shot in a very boring slow way the reverse thing at the end is just so cliche and if it was just flavor on top of the band doing a normal performance that would be nice but whereas i talked about domination having a really interestingly well cut video this video again even the performance stuff feels lazy the room looks small and boring and the band don't look particularly enthused and a lot of people often say that the way a band looks in a video is down to how good they are at performing and that can be true but sometimes you can just have a director who sets up an atmosphere or sets up a mood that they want to convey in the video and it just makes a band who are usually fun look boring. Now I don't know what happened on set but I don't feel like this was a fun set. It doesn't look like a fun set and if it was a fun set why is it not coming through on the camera? I've got to blame a director for that. So cringy cutaway cliche storyline and I'm not doing the weeb thing here but the fact they included like western people to do the acting as well really feels like just a play for pop points and the performance side of it was squandered didn't come across as well as i think it would have done if we just saw them play it yeah it was a subpar rather dull video which to me um didn't help a song that was already fighting to show that band may could do something interesting with pop so talking of stereotypes let's move over to a video that has got a lot of stereotypes in it but i think actually works and i've ribbed on this video a little bit before as well and that's don't let me down. Now, 
we all know about the cringy lyrics to this song. This song was obviously during the time when they were having songs written for them. And yeah, those lyrics are pretty cringy. However, you know, this is a song that I actually enjoy for being catchy, fast moving. It's really simple. It doesn't live up to the complexity and nuance that we know from latter day self songwriting bandmate. However, it's a song that you really feel actually does make a good single. It's a song that you can really say, let's put that on player. People are going to sing along. They're going to jump along. They're going to have a good time. So you need a video that supports that. Now, it does have, and I did make a few jokes about this before, the cliché Japanese girl in slow motion runs through Tokyo, this'll kill some time. But in this case, it feels more like a love letter to Tokyo. I actually feel like they are trying to show us a little bit of Tokyo. Also, Miku is really smiling in this. A lot of her personality comes across. Whereas usually when she's singing and playing guitar, you can't quite see the cheeky personality as clearly. Here... I don't know, I just kind of get a feel that her personality is what's running through Tokyo, not just some random actress. Also, those clips are shown rather sparingly between a video that, it doesn't seem it was shot on a particularly big budget, but is visually quite nicely put together. I love the way they have that sort of, um, almost looks like a kabuki background, I guess you could say, for the uh, choruses, where all of the different images come up. It's rather stereotypical Japan. You've got the shutter style uh, doors, kind of like that one. But it barrels along, it's a feast for the eyes, and it is quintessentially very Japanese, even if it looks kind of stereotypical, it is very Japanese. And I don't know, I just felt like this video, it's got pace, it's got a lot of personality to it, and it relies on the fact they're a Japanese band, which is never a harmful thing. I think you get to see a little bit of character and also a lot of movement and kinetic energy and a feast for the eyes. Yeah, it's just a good video. What isn't such a good video though is, and you guys are gonna hate me for this, non-fiction days. I think genuinely this video is so uncomplimentary to the song that I think it's probably, as I initially watched and heard this song as a reaction video, I think it's one of the things that kind of made the song feel unimpressive to me on first listen because this video is so lifeless and actually, to explain why that is, I'm going to do a comparison between it and the video for Endless Story. Now, Endless Story is not, in my opinion, a particularly great video, but it does something very similar. It takes the band basically out into the middle of nowhere, into a rather featureless landscape, and it does a relatively long music video with that. But the difference is just the quality of construction. So let's first of all look at what the problems with non-fiction days are, and they're maybe not things that on the surface are so obvious. Now, it's okay in a music video to have a variety of shots. In fact, it makes it more interesting. But there needs to be a certain structure to how they come across. They need to change and move with the song. In non-fiction days, it just feels like you get a different framing, different distance, different lens type, just all slapped over the place. And the worst thing is that the actual color palette changes between camera. So you get some of the more close-up cameras where they're really high contrast. And then you go back to another one where it just looks like there's been no color editing or post done on it at all and it just feels messy your eyes feel like they're struggling to follow it because there's no focal point everything just sort of feels like they got a bunch of footage and just slapped it all together with no real sense of purpose you take endless story for example in the verses it tends to have a camera which is very still focusing on the band members cutting between them it's kind of steady and then when you get into the choruses that's when the camera starts to move you see more different angles you get those wide angles where you really get the sense of the scale but when you're getting those wider angles the camera's moving so it doesn't feel like you're just focusing on a tiny pinpoint the actual background becomes part of the movement part of the scene in non-fiction days the just boring sandy place where they are is just left with no character it's just like saying hey we didn't want to put anything in the background and that's made even worse when they tried to put those little flames in and you know what you can do so much setting up a shot to take a very small flame and make it look kind of like something's happening but instead they almost go out their way to make the flames look really small like oh we just got a cheap burner and put it there i mean they make it look so undramatic it just oh it's cringy it's like they had no idea what they were doing everything feels messy it feels low energy it feels poorly planned it feels slapped together and i'm pretty sure the endless story has nothing going for it more than the fact that it was well constructed they get a good color palette they thought out the shots in advance and they tried to construct something with not very much 
And for me, that comparison is one of the reasons why non-fiction days is just such a dud of a video. However, if you really want to achieve a lot with not very much, let's go to a video that you guys all really know I love, Afterlife. Now you guys probably already know that I had previously said when it came out that in a complimentary way it felt to me like band made done by Wes Anderson. I loved the way that everything was kind of laid out in a flat scene and the camera zoomed in on different points. It's something that actually works surprisingly well for a music video but you don't see that technique used so much. It's cheeky. I mean usually zooming in that spaghetti western style way is seen as a little bit of a cheap effect but in music videos that's where you can have fun and it was just really fun there. And it was filmed in basically what appeared to be a blank corridor, followed by that whole thing with the maid slowly going crazy in another blank locker room. All of the rooms were blank, and to me that highlighted a good quality here. We talked about that sort of non-existent backing in the back of non-fiction days. Here it felt like the backing was kind of trying to suggest how mundane and dull the place was where the maids were working and therefore the band have come to play. But in that small claustrophobic space, it makes the actions of the band performing the song and then the maid actresses going a little bit crazy. It makes it bigger. They take up more of the space. They are kind of almost bouncing off of the walls. You really kind of get more of a sense of scale from the band by reducing the size of the set. And the fact that your eyes are allowed to focus on the performers, whether it be the actresses or the band. I also like that the uh, acted stuff with the maids, it's thrown in, but very quick cutting. It's kind of there, it's gone, it's there, it's gone. It's only there for a tiny little bit of time, just to give you an idea of something else going on other than the performance, just to make it feel a little bit more theatrical, cinematic, like a music video. A few little subtle things are brought in along the way to add a little bit of creativity to it. I like the bit where the flare comes in and the smoke starts billowing up, but again, that flare doesn't block your view. You're still allowed to see everything, but it adds a little bit of an interesting element to the video. And then on top of that, as I say, the fact that slowly as people join that locker room, more and more people start going crazy with whatever the contagious madness the maids have started off in there is. And then the final bit where you have a little dance along where they do, well, it was a dance along after I did it. You can check out that video on this channel not that you would want to um but when they have them doing the dance routine at the end it's a cheeky little thing the way that they've all sort of unified and gone from crazy into just performing as maids it doesn't necessarily make narrative sense but it just adds a bit of the interest to it it's all so simple but it's also effective it just works i love it it's full of personality it focuses well it moves in an interesting way that we don't see in many music videos but stays kinetic at the same time i love that music video it's brilliant i can watch it over and over again and being on a band made song just makes it 10 times better but talking of videos that are clear Let's go to the last one I'm going to say that I'm not a big fan of, and I know this is one that a lot of people have enjoyed a lot, and I'm going to have to add a certain caveat to this, but one of the videos I really don't like is Rene. Now, I'm sure most of you know this, but just for anyone who doesn't, I am aware of the fact that the video, from what I've been told by you guys, was originally set up because I think it was Psyche. She was really interested in like old video cameras and she really wanted to take some really old, sort of 100 year old looking crank handle cameras and try and do a video with it. And on the surface, I like that. I like that idea. Again, playing with different techniques is something that should be lauded and it adds as well a sort of grungy element to it. The problem is, is I feel that the cameras they went for, they went to too far back. You just can't see what's going on. Um, it's too grainy, the movement is too choppy, and as a result you can't get any of the kinetic energy. Everything is such a, a fuzzy blur and indistinct that you can't really see what they're doing. In a way it would have probably help if, helped if the shots weren't cut as quickly. Yes, you need quick cutting shots to go with a video that's well, a song that's so highly kinetic and energetic and heavy. But when your choice is between a sort of a slow cutting, interesting looking video that maybe doesn't keep the energy of the song, or another video where you just feel like you're looking at a confusing wall of fuzz like your TV's out of tune. I mean really most of the time you can't see what's happening and by the time you've worked out what's happening it's cut to the next frame or it's just not moving very well. It's a shame because you can kind of see if you take your time to focus on it. There's probably a really interesting performance going on back there and yes I appreciate this video was probably made on very little budget. I suspect not much budget was allocated for a video for Rene and so you know this was a fun idea to do with it and I really appreciate the idea but the result is a video that just doesn't feel like a video. I mean, it just feels like, yeah, I can't watch it. I mean, I literally can't watch it. And if I do watch it, I'm just 
I, I don't know what I'm watching. It's, it's just not anything that a music video should be. Uh, shame. Kind of um, nice idea, but just did not work. Something that did work, though, is Don't You Tell Me. <laughs> yeah, it's almost impossible to do a video like this without talking about Don't You Tell Me, because Don't You Tell Me is one of the more fun, but also very rocking band-made uh, videos. I like the fact that there is many different sets, the bits where they're performing in the hallway, the bits where they're all sort of trying to be maids in the back of this huge party together, the bits showing the party, and then the end bit where they actually storm into the party. There's all these little scenes that go together. There's the little personal touches where you look closer at things they're doing, but it feels very framed. It feels like someone really storyboarded this perfectly. I I love the fact that although it's kind of trying to be a little bit heavy and hard, you get to see them having fun. It doesn't take away from their personalities, it pushes their personalities to the front. And as I've kind of said, a lot of the best band made videos, well, any video for a band who've got this kind of much personality, is one where you show that personality, you let that be as much a character as the song itself. Great framing, also great cutting. I love the fact that every single shot seems to cut in a really nice way. It moves naturally, and that helps when you've got a lot of different shots going on, a lot of different scenes going on. It's nice when you cut well between them because it means that your brain kind of is ready for the next scene to come along. You get a certain pace, you get a certain flow to everything that just makes it work. It's very easy to consume. Your eyes know where to focus. There's a good focal point between different scenes as well. It just feels like a really seasoned professional product. I also want to say kudos for that final bit where they kind of go in and they flip everything up. The bit where they're running towards the table and you know you see Miku going first. If you just freeze frame that and you look what everyone's doing, there's a lot of personality just in that tiny little bit where they're going up to the table, running up from the back and then eventually flipping it over. There's a lot of personality in that shot. It almost feels like a quintessential band-made moment right there. You can see how much they enjoy what they're knowing they're about to do. The final shot as well is Psyche with her like leg up standing on the guy. Um, this I thought as well was quite nicely handled because in a lot of other of these sort of I don't want to sort of cheapen it with a throwaway term, but the sort of girls power bands, you know, girl power groups. Um, sometimes it's done in a rather cheap way where it feels phoned in. Oh, you know we're better than guys, guys are rubbish, blah, 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 blah. And it kind of feels, you know, if you're watching it as a guy, you kind of feel like, oh, okay, are we not on side or something? Um, whereas this is nice because they took time to set up this sort of bourgeois kind of group of people who were like, they all got their masks, they just look like toffs, they look like people who got more money than sense or personality. And I like that because it means that final bit where they start kicking ass, it's nice because you... You feel there's more than just, hey, girls are better than boys. You kind of feel like, hey, they're standing up for everyone who doesn't want to be a posh, that kind of person. I don't think I say this on this video. You can imagine the sort of words I'm going for. So it showed a lot of personality. It had a nice little final bit where you get to all cheer along for your band as they save the day. It had a nice sense of movement that really made the song come across. It was well-framed good lighting, everything looked professional, everything felt planned, and it was just so well paced. Don't You Tell Me is an amazing video. So anyway, there's my thoughts. There's just a few videos that I really like by them that I wanted to talk about, and some videos that for me never really worked. As always, get in the comments, tell me what you think. This is music videos, it's so subjective. I'm sure bandmate fans in general are great. I know you guys are not gonna get all upset and angry about the ones I've chosen. So just tell me what you think, and if you're totally a disagree then feel free to disagree i look forward to seeing it and until i hopefully see you very soon in japan for the next one of these for now ciao ciao